In part one, we examined the new paradigm of Bitcoin and money, starting with an introduction of what money truly is, followed by a review of Bitcoin's essence, and concluding with the question, can Bitcoin itself be considered money? Now, in part two, starting with chapter four, we shift our focus to the complex relationship between money and power. We'll assess Bitcoin as a potential decentralized solution to centralized power, and ultimately question whether we're prepared for this transformative shift. Chapter four. Spice Melange. On the planet of Arrakis exists a substance so valuable, so rare, and so necessary to our way of life, the countless people have toiled, bled, and even died to harvest this natural resource. It is the Spice Melange. And control of its production grants immense wealth and power to whichever house claims it. Money and power are intrinsically linked, much like the spice melange in the movie Dune. Recent events, like the freezing of bank accounts of anti-mandate protesters in Canada, highlight how this fictional scenario mirrors real-world dynamics. One of the most striking examples is Julian Assange. In 2011, after facing backlash from governments and financial institutions, WikiLeaks turned to Bitcoin for donations after numerous bank accounts tied to WikiLeaks and Assange were shut down. Fast forward to 2024, and Julian Assange is a free man with a 500K Bitcoin donation funding his return to Australia his story is a testament to the empowering potential of decentralized system such as Bitcoin. Let's hear what he said in 2014. The underlying technology of Bitcoin is cryptography on the one hand and the ability for cryptography to create situations that can defend itself or the people who use it against even the full might of a superpower. You know, a full might of a superpower doesn't help you smash a mass problem. We've seen how centralized control wields the power to censor. But what about its power to manipulate? In The Wolf of Wall Street, Leonardo DiCaprio's character pulls out a wad of cash, calling it fun coupons. Fun coupons! Yeah. But the idea of fiat currency being merely a plaything, its value as fleeting as those fun coupons, isn't just fictional. In 1971, a pivotal moment in monetary history occurred when Richard Nixon ended the gold standard, allowing for unrestricted money printing and triggering inflation. A power dramatically demonstrated during the COVID-19 pandemic. As a former US Federal Reserve Chairman, Alan Greenspan once noted, when there is confidence in the integrity of government, monetary authorities can issue unlimited claims denominated in their own currencies. This fiat money system, where currency is backed by faith in the government rather than a physical commodity, permits the creation of unlimited claims. Fiat translates to let it be done, underscoring the central authority's control over its value. So is a decentralized system such as Bitcoin the solution? Chapter 5 Is it possible that you are, in fact, Satoshi Nakamoto? No. The main reason I'm here is to clear my name that I have nothing to do with Bitcoin. Yeah. Nothing to do with developing. So, thanks for the invitation. I should get something out of the way right at the beginning. No, I'm sorry, I do not know who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Are you Satoshi Nakamoto? 
I'm certain I'm not. The quest to unmask Bitcoin's elusive creator, Satoshi Nakamoto, adds a captivating layer to this story. Despite widespread speculation, prominent figures, along with the rumored Japanese-American engineer Nakamoto, have denied any connection to this enigmatic figure. The intrigue surrounding Satoshi reveals a deeper desire to define Bitcoin's purpose. Ironically, the mystery may offer its strongest clue. Michael Saylor, a major crypto entrepreneur, suggested that having a founder who was anonymous is important. By remaining anonymous, Satoshi keeps Bitcoin free from any single influence, reinforcing its claim to decentralization. Yet, Bitcoin's decentralized system isn't without its challenges. Agustin Carstens of the Bank for International Settlements argued that Bitcoin hasn't performed this role of facilitating transactions on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. He makes a compelling case, especially when we consider the collapse of exchanges like Mt. Gox and the concentration of Bitcoin mining in regions like China, both of which cast doubt on Bitcoin's mission of decentralization. However, others believe decentralization is still evolving. As Niall Ferguson, best-selling author of The History of Money, noted, Bitcoin has survived the downfall of exchanges like FTX and Binance. The age of decentralized finance is still in its early stages. Yet, Bitcoin's decentralized ethos continues to spark debate over its viability as a true form of money. Nassim Taleb, author of The Black Swan, has expressed concern about moving to something vastly worse. With the Federal Reserve, he argued, we have transparency, we know what's going on, you can influence it, there's a system. Perhaps the real question is how ready we are to embrace the disruption of decentralized systems. Chapter 6 Bitcoin history. The original block is called the Genesis block. Satoshi Nakamoto, the pseudonymous creator of Bitcoin, appended the headline of the Times newspaper into the metadata of the block, Chancellor Exchequer on the brink of second bank bailout. As the Winklevoss twins narrate, Bitcoin's genesis hints at its purpose to decouple money from the destabilizing influence of political control and government-backed inflation. From the fall of the Roman Empire to the chaos of Weimar Germany to the collapse in Venezuela, History is littered with the wreckage of failed currencies. Hyperinflation, deflation and economic collapse have wreaked havoc on societies worldwide. Now, as we emerge from a global pandemic, our monetary systems face a new and formidable challenge, the power of censorship. Is it time for a radical change? Can we escape the endless cycle of boom and bust? Can we escape the grip of centralized control and censorship? Could Bitcoin serve as the catalyst for rethinking our reliance on traditional monetary systems? Edward Snowden, addressing the crowd at Bitcoin Amsterdam, called for decisive action. And I, I, I think we need to remember uh, particularly in these moments of instability, uh, that we are all part of a much bigger game. Uh, and Bitcoin is one of our strongest levers in that. Uh, the systems that we are influencing, that we are exerting leverage on, payments and finance, uh, will shape what the world of tomorrow looks like. Now, we, we have to cross some hurdles uh, to get there in a meaningful way. So are we ready? Greenspan himself once said of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is really a fascinating example of how human beings create value or estimate or judge value. And it's not always rational. You cannot tell me that you can create out of nothing something which has a medium of exchange value 
it is not a rational currency in that sense. But that does not mean it will not trade because so long as people believe they can sell it to somebody else or unload it on somebody else, that's all you need to take to create a market. Ironically, this logic applies equally to today's dominant form of money, fiat, whose value rests on collective belief. In this sense, Bitcoin's entry into the future of money may not be as radical as it first appears. So, is your curiosity piqued? Ready to dive deeper? Or do you still have doubts? Share your thoughts below.